Hey guys, welcome back to the off-season grind. And yes, that pun is fully intended. It's today, we're gonna to be showing off my new grinder from meetyourmaker.com and we'll be grinding some venison. So I've got about 10 pounds, actually about 12 pounds of whitetail venison. I've got a, one axis roast and one elk roast. Uh, so I've been doing a little bit of a freezer clean out uh, utilizing the Harvest Right freeze dryer and today we're gonna to do uh, some ground venison. Some of it I'm gonna freeze dry just for long-term storage. Some of the other stuff I'm gonna use for freeze dried meals for an upcoming video that I'm gonna do for freeze dried backpacking meals. Just real quick, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this meat grinder. It's from meetyourmaker.com. I did an upgrade probably about three months ago, a couple months ago maybe. It was almost 25% off. In fact, they did have 25% off on a half horsepower grinder that I was gonna get. And then my buddy Casey, uh, urged me to go ahead and do the one horsepower, said I wouldn't regret it. And since we've been doing a lot more of our own sausage making and sausage smoking, I've been uh, putting up a lot more meat and doing a lot more grinding. I thought that this one horsepower would be the last one that I need. It's got a limited lifetime warranty on it. So hopefully this will be the last one I ever buy. In fact, uh, one of the things I'll point out is I also bought a uh, couple of different scales from uh, meetyourmaker.com and uh, one of the scales, uh, one of the function buttons is not working correctly. So I actually called them up this morning. They did a little quick diagnostic on it and then they're shipping me a new one today, in fact. Meanwhile, I'm using the smaller scale and this is the one I've been using for my Harvest Right uh, freeze drying stuff. It's a smaller scale scale. So I'm just doing it in smaller batches to get the appropriate weights. Okay, now that I've got trans the meat transferred to the appropriate bowl and I can utilize my smaller lug for the, uh, the ground meat, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started and I'm not gonna uh, make you go through this with me and listen to the grinding noise and all of that stuff, but trust me when I say it's gonna be a short process. Okay, so our grinder made short work of the seven and a half pounds of whitetail. I've got another couple of pounds that I'm gonna do of, uh, of elk and axis. Ordinarily, when I grind venison, it's such a lean meat uh, that I wanna add a little bit of fat back to it. And so uh, I did some about two months ago that we use around the house, packaged it up. And what I did with that is uh, I purchased about five pounds of beef tallow from the local meat market. I mixed that in about 15 to 20%, depending on what it was for. And so we had about, you know, 80% lean, 20% fat. But for this, because I intend to freeze dry it, uh, both for meals and for long-term long storage, I wanna reduce the fat amount as much as I can. I want the leanest possible because uh, fat, a little bit of fat will freeze dry just fine, but the more fat that you have, the uh, less shelf stable it becomes. The fat in it will eventually turn rancid. Um, and so you wanna eliminate as much fat as, you, as possible for long-term storage. Now for shorter term, medium term, even up to five years, you can get away with just a little bit of fat. Probably could get away with that 80-20 blend. But for this, I want it to be able to last as long as possible. So I want it as, as lean as possible. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we cook it and start freeze drying it. All right, so I finished grinding up the meat. Ended up with about seven and a half pounds of whitetail. I've got a little less than two pounds of axis. In total, I've got 11 pounds of meat, which is pre-cooked, which is gonna be about right. I'm gonna do a little bit different than what I normally would. Instead of browning the meat in a skillet like I normally would um, and doing it in small batches, I think the best way to do it for freeze drying and to remove all the fat from it is to actually boil the meat. All right, so we've got our stock here up to a boil. And I don't want to boil it long. Uh, I just want to put it in there just long enough to get the pink out of the meat, which is only going to be just a few minutes. Uh, once it get all that pink out of there and it's it's cooked through, I'm just going to turn the heat off and then I'm going to let it sit in, in that warm water. And what that warm water will do is it'll get the rest of that fat out of there. I'll put it in the refrigerator uh, for a couple of hours and that fat will rise to the top and then we can remove that flat fat layer and make sure we've got all the fat out of it. Been a couple of minutes, you can see that we got all the pink out of the meat and the meat is good. Now, one other thing that boiling will do is it actually breaks the uh, meat up into finer grains and instead of being as clumpy as you get sometimes. So for some dishes, that's good. For others, it's bad. But for freeze drying, I think it's gonna work out really well. It's gonna be a little bit smaller, have a larger surface area, and should freeze dry more quickly. Well, I went ahead and let the meat cool down and then I put it in the refrigerator overnight. So here we are the next day and I pulled it out of the refrigerator and who knew uh, venison is very lean. So there's actually no fat layer at all 
on uh, the surface of the, the stock that we had in there. I'm gonna go ahead and divide this up into the trays for the freeze dryer. It'll probably make three equal trays. And then I'll probably actually go ahead and put the remaining stock back in one of the other trays. And we'll reuse that because it should get some additional flavor in that stock. We only boiled it for just a couple of minutes. I'll uh, freeze dry that stock and make actually a kind of a bone stock powder that I may put in with this when I package it. And that'll add that flavor back to it when you reconstitute it. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get it prepared for the freezer and then the freeze dryer. And we'll be back after we get all of that done to wrap it up. So I freeze dried the ground venison. This is the white tail, the seven and a half pounds of white tail. And I've got it packaged up here and then I remembered I wanted to go ahead and film this. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit out of it out just to show you what it looks like when it's uh, freeze dried. You can see it's kind of, it's very crumbly, uh, almost like spongy styrofoam. And so nice crumbly dry. I think that's gonna rehydrate really well. It's a different feel than dehydrated ground beef, like I talked about before, that they call gravel. I'm gonna do a rehydration test and a comparison. I think I still have some of the dehydrated uh, meat out in the freezer that I'll test it against. So we'll do a little bit of a comparison there, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, packaged up, put oxygen absorber in it. I've got three packages of this and right at 780 grams, I believe. So just by comparison, if you were to take a look at the Mountain House number 10 can, I believe of their ground beef is right at 800 grams of product, so very similar. And I checked earlier online and it's re currently retailing. The cheapest I could find it is like $69, so right at $70 for um, that. So <clears throat> by comparison, this of course, wasn't free, but it's uh, free doing a little freezer clean out. Some of this was uh, you know, 2021, 2020. I think I had a uh, bottom round that was from 2020. It was kind of at the end of its life in the freezer and trying to extend the life of it beyond uh, what it will be in the freezer. Let me know if you have any questions down at the comment section below. If there's something you'd like to see me freeze dry or try out. And I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.